See the spirit you said back there like you're you burning for a testimony. <laughs> Go ahead and tell us that. Sure, we do have something to thank the Lord for. All right. And, uh, to thank him for another day's journey. Amen. Uh, and I don't take it for granted that he woke me up this morning. I do realize that it was him that woke me up. Tell him. You know, I didn't wake up on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, the long call didn't wake me up. See. And so I just thank the Lord for all of you and for being in the presence of, of your presence one more time. Because I realize it could have been the other way. Amen. Amen. And if man had said so, oh. we would not be here. Amen. But it's good to be in the service. And I ask that you all just continue, just let the Lord lead and guide us, mm -hmm. and that, that we will do his will, do it his way, and it's in, in his time. Amen. 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 And like the deacon said, if he doesn't do another thing for me, he's done enough. Amen. Now, if you hear me complain, I want you to stop me right there. Because he's been good. Amen. He's been very good. And even looking like this, I can tell you again, I still don't look like what I've been through. Oh, Amen. Amen. And I'm going to leave the alone. Amen. Amen. It sounds like a joke, but it's not a joke. Amen. All the things he brought me through, That's right. Amen. Amen. I realize that not everybody here would have me here. It could have been the other way. All right, now. Don't Amen. take me like it when I tell you. It could have been the other way. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I knew she had a stirring testimony. Did I tell you? Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is good. All the time. God is good. God is good. God is good. All the time. God is good. God is good.
carry out, God. God, for, God, we just want to thank you, God, for the ushers that's standing at the door, God. Yes. That's going to usher your people in, God. God, we want to thank you for the choir that's going to sing your songs of you, God. For that, God, we want to thank you, God, for allowing us to have an opening ear, God, yes. to receive what to receive your word, God. God, we want to thank you for the woman of God that's going to break bread for us today, God. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Pastor Lewis and the Anderson Chapel Church, Missionary Baptist Church family, thank all of our visitors for sharing in our service today. Your love, support, and encouragement has helped to make our service a great worship experience. Special thanks to your, our very own Evangelist Dr. Margaret Knight for the message. We pray your strength and endurance as you continue the work that God has begun in you. May God continually bless, bless you all, Pastor Malcolm E. Lewis and the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family. And also, I just want to add that um, I'm glad we had service today, and I know um, we're going to be all right. Uh, but I just want to also say that I noticed that over time, uh, posting the videos, um, I've seen an increase. So let's just keep doing what we're doing and, and uh, help get the word out. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Dan.
Thank you, Brother Nancy, for the announcements and the choir for the hymn. We're going to have our scripture by Sister Jackie Barnes and our prayer by Deacon Raymay. Truly, I want to thank the Lord for my being here. Uh, my scripture will be coming from Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sumptuary and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise upon the high surrounding cymbal. Now this is my best one. Let everything that has breath praise, praise the Jesus. Lord. Praise, praise ye the Lord. That's what all of us got. Everybody got a chance yes. to do that. So yes. I think we should just give him all the praise yes. and honor. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Glory Amen. to God. Yes. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. We do um, praise God for being here. We're going to ask you to stand if, if you can, please. Let us go in the world of prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Lord, as a few of your people gather on here today, yes, we, yes. we come, oh God, just lifting up your name. For yes. we realize, oh Father God, you deserve all the glory and the praise. Yes, yes. Yes. Lord, we just want to thank you thank for just you. being amongst the living. Because yes. we realize that Heaven Father, it could have been the other way. Yes. Yes. But God, you seen that let us stay here a little bit longer. Yes. Uh, and while we're here, Lord, we just want to give you the praise and the glory. Yes. Father God, we want to, to, to do the thing that you will have us to do. Yes. And oh God, if there's anything that will hinder us from serving you, yes. Father God, we ask you to remove it yes. in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. Father, we come this morning asking you to bless the sick and the shut in. Yes, Jesus. We realize, oh Heavenly Father, you know every sickness there is. Yes. And oh Heavenly Father, we we going through a trial, a time on today, Lord. Yes. But Father God, we ask you, oh Heavenly Father, and we know you can remove all sickness, Lord. Yes, yes. you can. Father God, you mm -hmm. told us just come and and just give you the praise and the glory. Yes. Yes. Father God, you said your people will pray and mm -hmm. humble their self. Yes. And oh God, we know you will hear the land. Yes. Yes. There's yes. nothing yes. that's going on, oh Father God, that you can't heal. Lord. Yes. Yes. So Father yes. God, we just ask you just touch in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father God, we ask you to touch our pastor and his yes. wife. Yes. Not only them, oh Father God, we ask you to touch this whole nation. Lord. Yes. 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 Lord. Yes. Lord. 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 Father God, men have got so they think they're above you. Yes. Yes. But Father God, we know that you sent things our way and let us know you are still God. Yes. Yes. Father, we just ask you to just continue blessing. Lord God, we ask you to bless the choir and they Please sing your song yes. of God. Yes. Father God, touch your woman, sir, as she bring forth the word on yes. you. Yes. Oh God, we know there is a word for you. Yes. Yes. So we all be standing in a need of prayer and yes. we all yes. need a word for you on today, yes. Lord. Yes. Then, Father God, we ask you to bless the choir and they sing this song of God. God, open our hearts and our minds yes. where we can receive what you have for us today, Lord. Mm -hmm. And Father, we ask you now all these blessings in your Son, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, no, no, no. 
scripture. Amen. Deacon Maine for the prayer and the choir. And we're going to have our welcome by Mother Frances Dupree and our birthday recognition by the Mother's Ministry. Amen. Amen. I would like to say good morning to everybody. Amen. Amen. I thank God for everything. And I want to thank the visitor for coming this way when you didn't have to do it, but you did. Amen. And thank you anyway. And we thank, you, thank God for our church family. We can't leave them out because they are someone too. Amen. So we got to thank God for everybody. Mm -hmm. We welcome you once, twice, three times. You certainly are welcome. Amen. 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 Glory to God.
And uh, Brother Nicholas Carr was supposed to do Black History today, but I had my name on first Sunday, but it, it worked out. I just want to talk about African American. First, let me give honor to God for my being here. Amen. Truly to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to our pastor and first lady in their absence, to Minister Howard, to all the deacons, mothers, saints, and friends. Truly, it is a glorious day in the Lord. No matter what's going on in the world, it is a glorious day yes. in the Lord. Because whatever it is, he is certainly taking care of us. So I want to talk about African American history across North Carolina, and we'll start with the coast. Um, in 1806, Thomas H. Jones was born on a plantation near Wilmington, but was eventually sold to a shopkeeper who taught him reading, writing, and basic arithmetic. He escaped slavery in 1849 by hiding on a ship bound for New York. In the North, he worked for the abolitionist cause and published several narratives. In 1829, the fiery appeal of Wilmington native David Walker was printed in Boston and made its way to North Carolina, stirring the fears and suspicions of white slaveholders and legislators. David Walker's appeal in four articles, together with a preamble to the colored citizens of the world, but in particular and very expressly to those of the United States of America, was eventually banned in North Carolina and other southern states, but two more editions were printed before Walker's mysterious death in 1830. 1849, London R. Farabee was born to enslaved parents in Currituck County. His master, Edwin Coles, took Farabee away from his family to work with his boating crew, and in 1861, Farabee was living with his master's family in Steeltown, a village outside of Elizabeth City. 1898, the Wilmington Race Riots erupted. On November 10th and 11th, a white militia headed by the local Democratic leaders terrorized the black community, killing and wounding dozens, banishing much of the city's black leadership and burning the offices of several black businesses, including Wilmington's black newspaper, the record David Bryant Fulton's Hanover, uh, and Charles Chestnut's The Marrow of Tradition, are both thinly fictionalized accounts of the massacre. Uh, the Coastal Plain in 1790, Henry Evans, a Virginia-born shoemaker, organized Evans Chapel, now the Evans Metropolitan A.M.E. Zion Church in Fayetteville. 1813, Harriet Jacobs, America's most famous female slave narrator was born in Eden, North Carolina. Eighteen twenty-three, Joseph Baysmore, elder of the First Colored Baptist Church of Weldon, was born in Bertie County. Uh, Eighteen eighty, the first patient was admitted to the North Carolina Asylum for the Colored Insane, now Cherry Hospital, in Goldsboro. The state officially established the hospital in 1877, more than two decades after opening the first white asylum. And the Piedmont, 1832, John Chavez, a Revolutionary War veteran and prominent Presbyterian minister in Orange County and the surrounding areas, was forced to cease his public sermons when the General Assembly forbade African American preaching after Nat Turner's 1831 slave insurrection. 1868, the Colored Orphanage of North Carolina was mandated by the revised state constitution. However, the facility was not established until the 1880s, over a decade after the state created its first white orphanage. 1883, Gaston County Commissioners suggested a vote on a proposition that would tax black and white citizens at different rates for each race's segregated schools. 1890, the General Assembly approved plans to create North Carolina Agricultural and Mechanical College for Negroes, now North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. 1898, John Merrick founded the North Carolina Mutual and Provident Association in Durham. The company grew to become the United States' largest and most successful black-owned business with over 
million dollars in revenues upon Merrick's death in 1919. The Mountains, 1875, a sketch of a Waynesville African-American carpenter by J. Wells Champney appeared as part of a series of illustrations depicting life in this small western North Carolina town. Finally, African-American craftsmen working on Biltmore State gathered at the Asheville Young Man's Institute, an organization commissioned by Biltmore owner George Vanderbilt. Landscape architect Frederick Law Olmstead also worked on the Biltmore Mansion and had traveled throughout the South. Among other observations from his journey, Olmstead recorded his impressions of race relations and the black community in a journey in the seaboard slave states with remarks on their economy. That concludes our black history meditation for today. We truly have contributed to this country and we can see that locally our people have been serving North Carolina and America from the very, very beginning. They may omit our contributions, but we know without it they could not have made it. Amen. Amen. This is a part that we can all participate in. Worship and giving. The trustees are in charge.
At this time, we will have our altar call. And as you know, we have our altar call before the message is brought so that you can bring all your concerns, all your frustrations, all your trials and tribulations to the altar and leave them there. Amen. That your mind and your heart are free to receive what God has for you on today. Because in order for the word to penetrate, you have to open up and receive. And if you're all bottled down with problems and cares of the world, a lot of times you will miss what God has for you. So we give you the opportunity to come to the front if you so desire, or you can just stay right where you are. There is no distance in prayer. As Mother Johnson uh, calls out the names of our sick and shut in, we will uh, go to the altar in prayer for each and every one of us. Because it is a prayer time. Amen. That we don't understand, but we know God 
God, you got it all in control. But God, we're just asking you to protect us, God. Cover us in your blood, Jesus. Oh, God, let us know that everything is going to be all right. Oh, they got this virus that they're talking about. And oh, God, you got people that are more susceptible to it than others. But God, I know you got your love and all crap all around each and every one of us, God. Those of us who don't have it, you're going to keep us virus free. Yeah. Those that do have it, God, you're going to heal their body, God. Yeah. God, because you are loving God. Yeah. And you don't want to see your people suffer. Yes. Right. But God, we trust you and we lean on you and we depend on you, God. Yes. Oh, God, we know people got different things going on in their life. Yes. Oh, we're living in perilous times. Yes. And we recognize that, God. Oh, God, what you don't hear about somebody getting shot. Oh God, there are accidents each and every day. You don't hear about a family getting taken out, God. Things are just happening so fast, God. But God, we just ask you to just take care of us, God. Yes. Order our steps, God. Help us to be what you desire us to be, God. Oh God, let us walk right. Let us talk right. Let us live right, God. That we can reach those of the world that don't know you in the part of their sin, God. Oh, God, we just need you right now, God. Right now, God, more than we ever have before, God. And, God, there were some times that I know we all took you for granted. Oh, God, we just took you just like an old bed stand, God. You just there, and we didn't even consider you, God. But now, God, we realize how important you are to us, how much you mean to our lives, God, and, Lord, how much we can't make it without you. Oh, God, we've come to an understanding that you are everything, everything that we need, God. And we realize that, God, we're sorry for how callously we've taken you, God, how we've not even considered you at times, God. But, God, we thank you for staying right there, staying right there by our side, God, holding our hand, God, guiding us along the way. We thank you, God, that when we turn back on you, you did not turn away from us, God. And for that, God, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, God, because sometimes we have failed. We have not done what you told us to do. But, oh, God, you stayed right there. You stayed right there knowing that we had to come back to you. Knowing that we were going to run into a mountain. Yeah. Knowing that we were going to hit a valley. Yeah. Knowing that we were going to hit some obstacle that we could not take on our own. Right. And knowing, God, that we would have to call out your name to help us, God. Deliver us, God. Set us free, God. Right. Yeah. Oh, God, we count it done. Right. Because we know you are an all-knowing and all-wise, God. Yeah. Who can do anything but faith. Yeah. Oh, God, we count it done in Jesus' name. You said, ask anything. In Jesus' name, and you will give it to us, God. Yes, yes. So, God, we're asking for healing. Yes. We're asking for deliverance, God. Yes. We're asking for blessings, God. Yes. We're asking for a closer walk with thee, God. Yes, God. Oh, God, we're asking that those don't know you, that you would just touch their hearts, God. Yes, God. Touch them in a mighty way, God. Right. Let them know, God, that they can't continue on the way they're going. Let them know, God, at some point, they got to reach out and cry out for you. Yes. While there's yet breath in their body. Let them know, God, that we all need you. Yes. And no one can make it without you. Right. Yes. And Jesus is the only way to heaven. Yes. And without him, they will not make it. Right. Oh, God, we need you in these times. There are so many families that are struggling yes, just to yes. hold it together, God. Yes. There are so many families, God, that are just falling apart because of all the things that they're facing in this world, God. Yes, yes. But God, we know that you can hold them together. Yes, you created the family. Right. You said a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And then you told God to be fruitful and to multiply, God. So we know that you created the family. It is yours. And you will take care of it. Oh, God, just look down upon us. Touch every need. Touch every need. Oh, God, lift up. Lift up, God. Build up, God. Oh, God, stand up. Stand up those who need to be propped up on every leaning side, God. 
Do it, God. Do it, God. All right. Only you can do it, God. We need you right now, God. Right now. Yes. We're pleading, God. Because now we have learned to humble ourselves. We have learned to humble ourselves and pray. And turn from our wicked ways. Knowing, God, that then you will heal our land. And we believe it, God. And we count it done in Jesus' name. This is thy servant's prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So let's not be reckless, even though we trust and believe in God. All right. Will you pray with me? Amen. Our Father in God, which art in heaven, God, we thank you for this day. Because God, this is the day that you have made. Amen. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. God, we just thank you for waking us this morning. And so yes, it's on the way. We thank you, God, that you stopped by for just a little while yes, to sit with us and tell us that everything's going to be all right. Yes. We thank you, God. And God, we just ask you to hide us behind the cross, that there will be less of me and more of thee, God, that the people will see you in the beauty of your holiness. Oh, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 I'm going to be coming from Jeremiah 32, 17 and 27, and John 11, 1 through 11. All readings will come from the King James Version. If you don't mind, please stand for the reading of God's Word. First Jeremiah 32, verses 17 and 27. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power, and stretched thou on, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Amen. Glory to God. John 11, verses 1 through 11. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. He may be seated. We notice some, some things in the scripture that point out that God's time is not our time. And our time is not his time. And I know we sing the song, he may not come when you want him, but when he comes, he's, he's right on time. God knows your beginning and your ending and every step in between. He knows all about us. He knows what to do in every situation we find ourselves. The Clark sisters recorded a hit that spoke of the possibilities for those who had faith and truly believed. I remember Pines Chapel Junior Choir used to sing it often. Brother, well, he's going to step down. And it goes, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. 
and I see the invisible. The sky is the limit to what I can have. Just believe and receive it, and God will perform it today. Just believe and receive it, and God will perform it today. How many of you are looking for a miracle? Can expect the impossible. Do you expect the impossible? Do you feel the intangible? Do you see the invisible? So when you begin to feel the intangible and see the invisible, you begin to walk in the spirit, in the love of Christ. That's when you have left the carnal mind and turned on the spiritual mind. I may not have it, but I see it. It's not in my hands like the old man who kept shaking the keys because he was going to get a car. And every day he went outside and caught the bus, but he could see it. He could feel it. It wasn't there, but he knew it was on the way because he was looking for a miracle. He could feel, he could expect the impossible, feel the intangible, and see the invisible. All right. That's what we call faith. Oh, yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All right. Why am I going to hope for what I have? Right. I'm hoping for things that I'm expecting to come. And it may not be all material, but when God sends it, it'll be for me. Because what he has for me is for me. What he has for you is for you. I can't take it from you, and you can't take it from me. I want to speak from a thought today. If you only believe, all things are possible. The person who believes that impossible things can happen, develop an incredibly strong faith. Oh, yeah. You can measure your faith by the concept of the impossible. All right. See, I, I, my faith is not based on what I have. It's based on what I'm expecting. All right. Yeah. It's based on what I'm hoping for. I'm thanking God for what I have. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I know that there's greater to come. All right. Greater is coming. People who grow a great faith are those who believe that nothing is too good to be true. How many of you believe that God wants you to have the desires of your heart? Oh, yeah. Amen. That God has blessings for you that you have yet to tap into. Oh, that he has power for you that you have yet to tap into. Amen. We are just living on the surface of what God has in store for us. Amen. But when we begin to empower ourselves and believe and be strengthened, we're going to be able to do some great things in the name of God mm -hmm. according to His will. See, some things I may want may not be according to His will. And I can keep hoping for them, but since He knows what's best, He'll make the decision as to whether I get it. And whatever decision He makes, I'm satisfied with it. Amen. I'm so satisfied Amen. with anything that the Lord brings to me. Amen. Little minds see only little things. Mm -hmm. And as a result, little things only happen. Right. Amen. If you think small, <coughs> what you get is going to be small. Amen. But if you think big, what you think is going to be big. Because you know what? When you just only expect small things, that's all you work for. Amen. You don't strive for nothing else. You just work for that little bit of thing that you want. Mm -hmm. See, some people content to live in an apartment and give their money to somebody else. Amen. Other people are determined to invest in something that's going to one day belong to them. Mm -hmm. That's when you're thinking big. Sometimes we live below what God has in store for us mm -hmm. because we think small. Big minds see big things. But well, big faith brings big results. Robert Shuler, in his book, Move Ahead with Possibility Thinking, begins the book with these questions. Are you limping when you should be walking? Whimpering when you should be whistling? Crying when you should be laughing? Are you being defeated by your problems, facing frustrations that are discouraging you, Heartaches that are depressing you. Are you bored with life, tired of living, lacking zest and excitement? Are you watching somebody make a great success of an opportunity you turned down? Are your projects and dreams struggling 
when they could be thriving. All right. Shrinking when they could be growing. Failing when they could be succeeding. Are you living at the bottom or are you living at the top? And that's determined by you. It's determined by the effort, the prayer, and the work that you put in. All right. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Don't build a case against yourself. Never settle for that which is small. And, and you know, there's blessings in small things. I'm not saying that small things aren't good. But where God placed you is not where he's determined for you to end. Right. He put you here as a beginning. But he intends for you to take some steps to get to the destination he has set for you. He doesn't intend for you to stay in that one small spot. If you're following God, you have got to be moving. You cannot be standing still. You've got to be pressing your way forward. You've got to be forward thinking and forward believing. When everybody else says it can happen, you need to be standing up saying, with my God, all things are possible. Amen. When everybody else is saying, don't try that, you need to be saying, with my God, all things are possible. Because that's where your faith is. That's where your hope is. And again, I'm not saying be reckless. But I'm saying know who you are in God. Know what God has in store for you. Because what God has for you is for you. But you have to be the one to seek him to find out what it is. Don't go after what he's got for me. Because that may put you in a situation you can't handle. And I'm not going to go after what he has for you. Because I don't want to be in the water over my head. But I'm going to seek him for that which he has for me. I'm going to work for that which he has for me. He may not intend for me to live in the mansion on the hill. But he's got something in store for me. But I got to know him. I got to hear his voice. And I got to receive him. Right. There's nothing too hard for God. And Jeremiah was getting ready to take the children of Israel into captivity. 70 years captivity. But he was letting Jeremiah know. There's nothing too hard for me. Don't lose faith. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. Just go. Accept the punishment that I've got planned. And know that I'm still going to be there. Right. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing that I can't do for you in Babylon that I didn't do for you in Judea and Israel. Right. I'm still the same God wherever you are. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Keep on pressing and moving. He told them when you go into captivity, Give your daughters to sons and take, daughters, take wives for your sons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I want you to build a life. Plant fields, plant vineyards. Go ahead over there and live. Your captivity is not to stop you from living, but to deal with you and what you have done that I didn't want you to do. Mm -hmm. That's the punishment. Mm -hmm. Accept it and be strong. You get caught up in trouble and end up in jail, take advantage of what's there. Take the classes, go to college, do whatever the state will pay for. Take advantage of your situation. Get Let God get the glory out of you. Amen. Don't sit there depressed and angry, making the situation worse. Take whatever God situation God has placed you in and use it to his glory. Amen. If he puts you on the farm, be the best farmer that there is. Amen. If he puts you in the White House, be the best president that there is. Amen. You do what God has called you to do to the very best of your ability, knowing that he has given you everything you need to get the job done. Right. Everything you need. If you only believe, all things are possible. You can go as far as you think you can. If you settle for sitting down doing nothing, then that's your choice. Don't blame God. Amen. That's your choice. But if you up and you're moving, then thank God for the strength mm -hmm. and the faith to go forward, to step out in the world, to face the challenges and the opportunities that he has placed before you. We have not 
Because we ask not. He says, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. But you got to do it. You got to do it. He's made possibilities available to you. But you got to take advantage of it. Lazarus had died. Mm -hmm. Mary and Martha sent for Jesus because they knew what Jesus was capable of doing. Oh, yeah. They knew if Jesus was there, Lazarus would be okay. Mm -hmm. So they sent for Jesus. But he didn't come right away. Mm -hmm. He didn't come right away. He stayed two additional days right. where he was. Right. Now, these were people that he loved. And we know that Jesus loves us all, but this was a special relationship that he had with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He spent time in their home when he was in that area. So he told his disciples, Lazarus is sick, and he sleeps. And they said, Lord, well, if he sleeps, that's good for him. Because, you know, when you're sick and you sleep, you get better. It strengthens you. It builds you up. But Jesus said, can it make it plain? Lazarus is dead. Amen. And I'm going there to wake him. Mm -hmm. All right. How would you feel if somebody said to you, he's dead, and I'm going there to wake him? <laughs> you think, what? <laughs> How are you going to wake up a dead person? But this is Jesus. Amen. This is Jesus who is fully man and fully God. A man who can love and care for people and have friends, but yet has the power to wake the dead. So Jesus travels on, and then the first thing the disciples say, wait, wait, wait. Now if you go back there, the Pharisees are already mad with you, and they're going to try to take you. Jesus said, what? I'm still going. I'm still going. Why? Because Lazarus is dead and I'm going there to wake him. Right. Nothing you could say could sway Jesus from the path that God had laid for him. He came into the world for a purpose and he was going to finish that purpose. He was obedient to his father. The plan that God had set for him, Jesus was going to take care of it regardless of what he had to go through. Right. How many of us today are willing to step out and follow the plan that God has set for our life, no matter what we go through? Because you're going to encounter some things along the way. You're going to meet up with some folks that ain't going to understand, that's not going to want to see you prosper. You're going to come into all those things. But guess what? It's okay. That's right. Because God is still there. Yeah. He is there with you. He is there keeping you. Look at all the times that he delivered the children of Israel. He stopped the sun so that Joshua could win the battle. He parted the Red Sea so that Moses and the children of Israel could escape out of Egypt. There is nothing too hard for God. He created the earth. All that you see is his creation. Right. You are his creation. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God if you only believe. Right. All things are possible. All things are possible to you. So Jesus goes on to Bethany. And while he's coming, Martha finds out he's on the way and she doesn't wait for him to get to the house, she runs to meet him. How many of you, when you see family coming that's been gone for a long time, when they drive up in the yard, you don't wait for them to get in the house. You run out and you meet them because you're glad that they're there. Martha, even though her brother had died, <laughs> she ran to meet Jesus. She ran to meet him. He didn't get there in the time she thought he should have because if he had been there her brother would not have died right. mm -hmm. but he was coming and when she got to him that's what she said Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died right. Jesus said do you believe that you'll see your brother again she said I know I'll see him in the resurrection 
See, the Jews believed in a resurrection. Mm -hmm. Jesus let her know, I am the resurrection. Mm -hmm. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet will he live. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the resurrection. Show me where you laid it. Show me where he lays. So then they go and get Mary. Mary went out and says the same thing. And she comes crying and all those following her crying. They're crying and Jesus starts crying. <laughs> Everybody's crying. But all Jesus wants to know is where did you lay it? Show me where he lay. And he went there and he told them to roll back the stone. Martha said, Jesus, surely he has begun to stink. It has been for they didn't involve the bodies back then. They wrapped them and they put spices on them to control the odor. But the body was going to begin to decay. It was going to begin to break down. Four days in the grave? Oh yeah. Surely he's thinking about them. But is anything too hard for God? Is God capable of doing the impossible? Do you have the faith? Do you believe? Do you trust? That God is able to do what you need him to do. That God is able to move in your situation. That God is able to make a way out of no way to lift you up from a broken spirit. Do you believe that God is able on today? Amen. So they, they roll back the stone. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Mm -hmm. Lazarus, come forth. He called his name. Because if he had just said, come forth, everybody would come out of the grave. But he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he got up in his grave clothes. Because when Jesus called, you have got to have. When Jesus said, come, you have got to come. Amen. He come in his grave clothes. And he looked at him and he said, loose him and let him go. After four days in the grave, Jesus woke this dead man. If he could wake up a dead man from his sleep, do you think he could wake up some of those dead things that's going on in your life? Some of the things that you have allowed to die that you need to wake up and live again. Amen. Some of us sit here like we don't care, like we don't feel nothing, like nothing is happening in our life, like we're thrown away. We need to be awakened. Jesus can do that if you only believe. Amen. If you only believe. Yeah. If you only trust. Oh, yeah. Do you believe that we can defeat this virus? Yes, we can. We can. and see 
see them looked up toward heaven and he could see Jesus standing to receive his spirit. I don't care what the state is. How bad it looks. How bad it is. Because sometimes it don't look bad. It is bad. Amen. Jesus is able. Yes, he is. He's able and he's willing to bring you out to stand you up, to prop you up, to hold you up, Amen. to help you Amen. in times of trouble. Yes, he is. But not only is he there in times of trouble, he's there in the good times. Yes, he is. He's still pushing you forward. You're moving forward because he's the wind at your back. Right. He's got you. He's got you. Don't be afraid to move. Don't be afraid to take a step. Jesus is with you. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I will be with you until the end of the age. See, I know he has greater. I know he has greater. Because he said, one day he's coming back. He's coming back. And he's going to take me up with him. He's going to take my corruption and put on incorruption. He's going to take my moral and put on immoral. And I shall ever be with the Lord. Amen. Greater is coming. Greater is coming. See, he's delivered me from the payment of sin. He's delivered me from the penalty of sin. But he has promised to deliver me from the presence of sin. He's going to take me out of this world. And take me to a glorious heaven. While I shall reign with him forever. Amen. Greater is coming. If you only believe. Amen. If you only believe. Nothing is impossible to, to God. You just got to believe. Amen. You got to have faith. Mm -hmm. The size of a mustard seed. Mustard seed faith. Right. Will move mountains. Yes, it will. Must see faith will move problems. Yes, it will. Must see faith will move heartache. Yes, it will. Must see faith will heal bodies. Yes, it will. Must see faith will deliver and save our families. Mm -hmm. Must see faith will deliver and save our communities. Must see faith will overcome any enemy that comes against us Amen. if you only believe. Nothing is impossible to God. Amen. Amen. God, Amen. God be the glory for all that he has done. If you only believe. If you only believe. Make the choice for Jesus today. Trust in him who will never leave you. The gospel invitation is extended. For all those who don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, the invitation is extended. For those of you who have strayed away or moved away or who just have, have fell behind a little bit, the invitation is extended. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. Come to him who will save you.
of this church. She was a faithful member, but she moved away. She is satisfied with her baptism. She knows that she is saved. She knows that she's a child of God. And she's asking you today, can she come back home? Can she reunite with Anderson Chapel? Deacons, what do you say? Minister and I are motioned that uh, the sister is not back to have the child and receive all right and privilege that the church has. Yeah. I second that much. Okay, it's been motioned and second that she be received back into the church family. Congregation, what do you say? All in favor? <laughs> all right, welcome back. Welcome Amen. back. Praise now, God. The pastor's not here today. But we're going to extend to you the right hand of fellowship. And when he returns, he will also take the opportunity to do so. But today, we're going to welcome you back because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. 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 We all have time to wait Amen. because I'm telling you, the harvest is plentiful. And the laborers of you. And we need everyone. Amen. That we can. So right now we welcome you back to Anderson Chapel. Amen. We love you. And we want you to feel at home, get busy, and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Ask the deacons and the trustees to come up to this yard. God be the Lord. Amen. God be the Lord. <laughs> <laughs>
are a member right. of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and we are so glad that you chose to come back home. Amen. There's no place like Amen. home. Amen. No Amen. place like home. Mm -hmm. And we're just thankful to God for how he kept you all the years that you were away. Amen. So we just thank Amen. God for you. We're thank so you. happy to have you back. <laughs> thank you, Lord. I love Church, we got another one added to the number. Amen. God is still in the blessed business. Yes, he is. God is still blessing. Yes, he is. Still keeping us. Yes, he is. Trust deacons, you feel that we did everything in order. We're not overstepping the pastor. We recognize that he is not here, but when he returns, uh, he will take the opportunity to extend the right hand of fellowship. But we want her to know today that she is at home. Amen. And she is welcome. Amen. So all hearts and minds are clear. Please come to your feet. Please remember that April 5th is roll call. All members are expected to be present. Okay. And Sister Davis, yes. as much as you support us, <laughs> we are going to try to come and support you. Amen. If Lord say so. Amen. So all of y'all remember Washington Branch Women's Day, second Sunday in April. Because right. you have been faithful to us. Amen. All my hearts and minds are clear. Choir. This is thy servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen.